Today we talk about Intel, which is an espionage board game with serious trust issues. Intel is a 2 to 6 player game where the players play in teams trying to steal the opposing team's files and then escape with them with a helicopter. Intel can be played in a variety of different game modes, it has an expansion, the mercenaries, it has a way to play with two, with four. So let's get straight to the point. In the main game you play in two teams. One team is the Soviets and the other team is the British, right? And what you do is you essentially get a card at the beginning of the, of the game which tells you which side of the team you are on. You don't know who is your enemy and who is your ally. I must point out this is not a traitor game. Right, this is a deduction game and not a traitor game. So there's no traitor here. If you manage to find out who your ally is early on, then good for you. Halfway in the game you realize that the, the ally you were playing with is actually not your ally, but there is. <laughs> yes, the person you think is your ally, unless you've actually seen his card, which is possible through interrogation, can be someone who is actually not your ally the whole time. He's been trying to trick you. For being your ally. You can do a variety of moves early game which may give away your allegiance unless you're doing a double bluff. But there is a lot of this kind of stuff with you did that, you did that, there's this banter going on between the players and then there's the possibility to actually see the opponent's card with the true and interrogation. But when you do the interrogation the, the possibility of actually getting the card is really low. Right? So, most of the time you do an interrogation and get a card that you didn't really want to see, so if you actually manage to see the other player's card, then you are sure that that is his allegiance, and therefore only then, only then, can you be 100% sure that this player is on that side. Otherwise, don't trust anyone, baby. Not during Intel. The scope of the game is to acquire the opposing team's files and then escape with them from the building through a helicopter. There are various rooms inside this building that you are in and each room has a particular thing that you can do. For example, the radio room allows you to call a specific helicopter. You can call your own or you can call the opposing teams. And then if you call your opposing teams you can explode them with the bomb. There are two ways to win. One, if both helicopters of the opposing team have been destroyed with a bomb. Or two, if you escape with the actual files. As I said, each room has a specific ability. Each and every single room except the stairs um, ha have something that they will do. Some rooms are more important in different scenarios, but more or less each room has an ability that you can do. For example, the infirmary will heal an injured person. The storeroom will allow you to pick up an item. The armory will allow you to pick up a new weapon. The radio room, as I've already mentioned, allows you to call a helicopter. The helipad, of course, lands the helicopter in there, and that is where you escape or where you decide to go if you want to blow up your opponent's helicopter. Once in a helicopter, has been called down, it can't go away unless you either board it or explode it. So calling a helicopter in itself is one of those things that I mentioned before that could be a giveaway of what you're doing. So depends on which part of the game you call it in and uh, what time during the game you call it in. It could mean different things. This game is one which the players really make it. The story that the players create, the, the interactions that the players make really really create the story arc of the game. However, there is always something different that happens. This is one of those games where you, where you talk a lot after. And this is something that I quite like in games, the after discussion of what happened where and how and when and why you did that, why you did this, why, what happened, is really, I, I think, an integral part of the game because that allows you to, to understand what each player was thinking when and that can teach you things about the actual game itself or if a player doesn't want to reveal what he has been doing then you can, that itself can teach you the way the player thinks. I think player interaction here is on a level which I rarely see. Playing this game silent is completely pointless. How you talk to someone, how you discuss with someone, what you, how you, do, you as a group decide what you're going to do, it was, is what pushes the game forward. And that is what creates, for me, the memorable times during the gameplay. I think one of the most interesting dynamics in the game is the movement and the relationship between time, space and the players where they are, where, where they are put. I think um, it has a very mature way of, of, of dealing with this. You can move essentially to any room on any turn, always allowing by the path. So each room is connected by a door to the next room or the stairs which take you to the next level. There are three levels. And the stairs will take you up or down to the next level. If the, if the path to any room is clear, you can just go there in one turn. 
if you are in building trying to find secret files, you are always on the tip of your toes because anyone can walk into the room you are in at any moment in time. So that really is congruent to the theme here. The fact that anyone can just walk into your room at any time and you don't know where everyone else is. If you knew where everyone else is, you would uh, know if they're going to show up this or next turn. In this game, you can't you can't tell. You don't know if this, the, the next player is going to walk up to you or walk up to another room somewhere else or go some other place. So the dynamic of blocking each other and movement changes from counting how many spaces there are away in something like um, the set, for example, or Clue, where the players do have interaction with each other and do have a, a single player which represents them, but the distance does play a significant role. In this game, distance from each other does not really play that big of a role unless there are players in the way. What makes the difference is, is how many players are in the rooms which lead up to that room. So, you don't count up the distance between the players. What you do assess is the amount of barricades that you've placed for that player to reach you. So the placement of your meeple is what will determine where the players can go. Every time two players meet in a room, are in the same room, or one player approaches the other, they need to interact. And the interaction I'll talk about in a second. The, th the thing is here that the players really make up the map. The current situation of where the players are makes up where the other players can go. The map changes with each move. The map becomes a different new one. The situation, the board situation, is what makes the spatial dynamic, is what makes you, gives you the options of where you can go or where you'd like to go. So your placement, going to a room, is not just going to a room to gain its ability, but going to a room is also blocking someone or opening a gap for someone or allowing you to interact with someone. So your placement of the meeple is really important, a lot more important than in games where, okay, in this square this happens or in this square something else happens or let's meet in that room. It's not related to that because each place where you put the meeple forms the maze where the players can pass through. When you interact between players, you meet in a room and you have five cards. Three of them are weapons. One of them is a friendly and the other is nothing. Nothing is the only one that allows you to progress in the further rooms. All the other four cards, if you play those, it means that you're stuck in that room and you have to do the action. So progressing to further rooms when there's a player, when you're meeting with a player in a room, is very difficult. So what you do when you, when you interact with a player is you choose one of these cards, give it to him, he chooses one of his cards and he gives it to you. If you play a friendly, it means that you can exchange cards with him. If you play nothing, nothing happens. If you play a weapon, and he plays a weapon as well. There is a rock-paper-scissors mechanic where one weapon will beat another weapon, that weapon will beat another weapon, you have three weapons. Thing is, when you use a weapon, you discard it. Which means that if you've interacted with a player before and you know which card he's discarded, you have a better strategy on which one to play. Also, if someone who you are currently collaborating with could tell you what card he's already discarded, because players know if they've interacted with each other what they have played previously and uh, allows them to play the card that is best suited. Once you discard all of your weapon cards, you draw them all back in. If you play a weapon card and your opponent plays a friendly or nothing, you automatically win. When you win, you can do a few things. Things. You can either steal from that player from the items that he has in hand, which could include medical kits, night vision goggles to see in when it's dark, the files. The other option that you can do is interrogate, where um, the player puts some of his uh, some of his cards, his allegiance, and some of his weapons and the nothing into a pile, shuffles them, and you draw just one. And there you can see if you happen to see the allegiance, it's good, but it's very rare that you actually manage to see his allegiance during an interrogation. The other thing you could probably see a weapon that he has or nothing. That's the second action you can do. The third action you can do is to injure the person. When you injure the person, he becomes injured, you topple down the meeple, and that player can only move two spaces until he either plays a medical kit or goes to the infirmary, which is one of the rooms inside the building, which gives him back his life, of course. The interrogation, I think, is really interesting, actually, because it's a quite a big risk for you to take when you could steal from him or injure him. If you get nothing, it is a lost action, but it could give you some of the most valuable information that you can get. Now, it's weird, because as an interrogant, you see a card, but the opposing player does not know what you have seen. So if you see his allegiance and he's with you, and you tell him, dude, you're with me, he can he cannot believe you because he does not know what information he has given you. This is very cool in gameplay terms, but in terms of actual congruence with the theme of interrogation, it's probably a little bit off because it's weird for a player to be interrogated and not know what he has given you, right? When you interrogate someone, the person who's being interrogated knows exactly what he said. 
and generally carefully stated. But I, I mean, what's in a name? You know, it's called interrogation. In gameplay in terms, it works and it's really cool. Interrogation is probably not the exact word for it, but eh. There are also two briefcases in the main game which can contain the actual important stuff. They can contain bombs, which allow you to blow up the opposing team's helicopter. They can contain the files, which allow you to, of course, escape with them in a helicopter. And they can contain other more important stuff. But they can also contain contraband, which is just actually a card which fills up a spot in your hand and you can't do anything with it. If you do a friendly, you can essentially give that card to someone that you've been being friendly with. So you could build a friendly relationship with someone just so you can get rid of your contraband. And then when you when you see that someone's giving you a contraband, you're like, what? We've been we've been friends for, for like six minutes in this game. Ha -ha. Why? You betrayed me. I will get back to you. <laughs> etc. 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 And all of these mechanics, the briefcase, which essentially may or may not hold back important information or important cards inside the briefcases and they can be opened with a specific item which is the code breaker um once you manage to get the code breaker right you can open up the briefcase but this the briefcase the interrogation the drawing of items from the storehouses all of these act as a sort of slow reveal of information the game slowly reveals the information unto you from your exploration from the cards that you draw from the briefcases which hold back some of the information to somehow in real good timing spots right to create this sort of story arc of things happening and the information being pulled out little by little by little through your one-off interrogations through these briefcases I mean the feeling when you open a briefcase you don't know what's in there you open the briefcase and you find contraband or you find the actual key item which can allow you to win and generally these items show up because of the briefcases show up later game and I think that's a really cool mechanic of, of, of placing it which fits the theme perfectly where they are locked in a briefcase but the briefcase may contain shit. The thing is, finding your ally is hard. When you find your ally, convincing him that he's an ally is also hard. And then collaborating with that ally is also difficult because the thing is you're sitting around a table, all players next to each other, and all the information that you, you, you do put out there is completely open, right? I mean, you can't, I mean, it would be strange to have players walk away and go talk in another room. In this game, it's not in, the, it's not in the rules like it is in diplomacy, for example. The information that you exchange with the other player, if you tell him, dude, you're with me, the other players are hearing what you're saying. So, collaboration is hard, you, it is doable, but the amount of information you reveal to the other player um, and that dynamic of him sitting in front of you, possibly giving him the eye or telling him <laughs> mental collaboration, things like that. That, that, that is a, a heightened sort of thing, which is, and it's fine. If other players can see it, it's fine. You might be bluffing. You know what I mean? It's, there's this whole thing of player interaction, which is not in the rules and happens between the players. I mean, if I play this game with my family, it will be a completely different game than if I play it with my friends or with my game design colleagues. It will be a a completely different experience and that is cool because it still works if it only works with a with a group i would say it's a criticism but because of the strong element it still works it just changes the dynamic a little bit there are some rooms in the game which are used a lot less than others i mean the armory for example which gives you an extra weapon which you could have so you have four that kind of sort of throws the opponents off on which one you've played and which one you've not or the storeroom where you can actually draw items and, and you can get medikits, uh, bombs, and all, all, all kind of, or keys, for code breakers for the suitcases. Those rooms are used constantly. They are the ones that people go to most. The radio room, for example, is only used when you need to call something. The infirmary is only used the, the same thing. The, the, then there are two rooms, the, the x-ray room and the hacking room, which are used to be able to see what players have when they pass through x-ray spots and, and things like that. It's a... Sounds like a really cool mechanic and it's really, really useful if you play it at the correct time. However, I found it was greatly underused in the games that I have played. Possibly it was the playstyle that we played. The thing is that you have to remain in that room. So m most of the time when you enter, for example, the x-ray room, people know that you're in there and try to avoid those things. So essentially, if you're spending a lot of time in the x-ray room, you're just wasting a lot of time. The amount of information you can gain is useful but not as useful most likely as actually getting an item from the storeroom or actually getting another weapon or actually doing a key event such as calling the helicopter down. So going to those rooms is almost always a second choice when you can't really do anything, which although is countered by the fact that 
um, uh, the, the actual tactical location where you are changes the, 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 the game map. So you could also go to these rooms to use them as a sort of blocking mechanism or something like that. There are some doors which have x-rays in them, so if you're in the x-ray room, um, the players who pass through these doors uh, will have their, some of their cards seen by you, and the hacking room allows people to operate specific rooms to be hacked into, and you could see what, what they have. So those are two other methods of gaining information, which I saw were underused in the games I played. And when you think you've understood everything, and you know how this game works, then you plop in the Mercenaries expansion. The biggest change in the Mercenaries expansion is probably the player interaction action because now you're not in teams now you're on your own and you're given multiple missions which you need to complete but an ally in one mission is not your ally in the next mission most probably the first player to complete three missions wins thing is here that now now it's it feels a lot more like a sport now it feels a lot more like you're playing a game of i don't know capture the flag for example like you're in this arena and you're all romping and running around in the arena pushing each other around and playing a game with rules then it feels on the other one the other one feels very thematic, while the, the mercenaries feels a lot more like a sport, I would say, where you have these missions and you're going for it. So there's a, definitely a shift in dynamic there. The relationships that you build in mercenaries are short-lived because what you've built together will probably not be there when you go for the next mission. There's also a shift in the way, in the spatial dynamic as you add more players. So for example, if you play mercenaries with six players, you will have a lot more, a lot more crowded area, right? With the same rooms, you have the same rooms, but now six players instead of three or two or four. And the thing here is that they'll have more people asking each other, can you let me pass? A lot more than you do in, in, in a four player game. Also, uh, obviously because of the diff of the placement, there are much more barriers that you need to pass through to, to get to a particular room. But because there's no use of the helipad and the radio room and some other rooms in the mercenaries type of game. So there is no particular room that you need to get to. The movement there is always in in congruence with getting the missions done and going from one mission to another. Okay, so now that I've spent most of this frickin' review in hyper-analysis mode, I shall go a little bit lighter. Intel is essentially a modern version of Clue with elements of Battlestar Galactica and Resistance plopped in and then a little bit of that ninja game and Red Alert. You ask me why Red Alert, huh? <laughs> well, because it has the Soviets in it, and these two characters are probably called Natasha and Yuri, and probably... Dave? Um, that's kind of racist, in a way. Oh, Ah, okay. Oh yeah, Intel is a game about deduction, some deduction, some production. Everybody likes Intel the game because it's intelligent. Come on, show me that card, yo. Come on, show me what you got, show me what you got, show me your... Oh, you put out that weapon. Yo, Intel, it's a game about you. It's a game about stealing them poo. It's a game about taking the files and taking them out on a helicopter ride. That's right, grab a helicopter, run away in a helicopter, jump about and tell your friends you love them, but then show them your card and you don't love them, you actually gave them some contraband. Hey! <laughs> you gave them a contraband, man. You gave your friend like some contraband. I trusted you, man. I trusted you. Asshole.